Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Rodney, and I'm back, and I just wanted to come and run my mouth for a quick second. Now, listen, we're not going to get too loud because the people already said that we be making too much noise, and, girl, we need to calm it down, and... <sighs> but then, look at her, or him, or non-binary, whoever it is up there, I don't care who. But I guess it's my fault because I ain't said nothing. So we're going to kind of keep it, you know, a little low because it's past 10 o'clock. So this is what I wanted to talk about. King Harris got arrested. Are we surprised? No. I mean, look who his mama and daddy is. But especially, look who his daddy is. So are we surprised that he now has a mug shot at how old is King? 17? 18? Are we surprised that he has a mug shot and he's only a teenager? Not really. Um, again, look who his father is. The one who has molded him to be the man that he will become, right? The man that he is, the young man that he is today. The one who was at the Waffle House the other day threatening to go back and pistol whip somebody. And then his daddy <laughs> got on the line and pretty much made a joke about it. I don't know why King was arrested, um, but he sounds like he's kind of happy <laughs> about having a mug shot. Or it doesn't, it doesn't bother him. Um, I mean, there's really nothing else to say. I mean, girl, he, he was arrested. He was arrested, and um, the details, they haven't discussed the details um, of why he was arrested. It is what it is. It's going to be what it's going to be. You know, I do want to say this. King Harris, that is an interesting-looking human being. He's very interesting looking. <laughs> Y'all don't think so? King look like he got some developmental issues. He look like he, he got he look like he got some developmental delays. King looked like he been touched with downs. And that is not even to disrespect people who have uh, Down syndrome, but at least when, you know, the people that have Down syndrome, um, you know, we know what comes with that, right? King looked like he got a touch of Downs, but he ain't got it though. You know, when I tell you, baby, T.I. and Tiny, Girl, y'all did a number on him. That's probably why he cutting up and acting out the way he cutting up and acting out because he because he a little ugly something. Girl. <laughs> oh wait, Poe King. Girl, you already gotta go through life with your with your daddy being T.I. And then to add on top of who your daddy is, you gotta add on your looks to it too. Oh my goodness. That's a mess. <sighs> y'all hear him? Y'all hear him? Y'all hear them? Whoever it is. I have a neighbor who makes a, who, I don't know what they do. I've never knocked on their door. I've never really made a complaint because, believe it or not, it doesn't really bother me. It bothers me whenever I make a video because I think that you guys are bothered. Um, and this is my studio. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um... So that's what bothers me the most. Um, but I've actually learned to tune it out. At one point, I thought I thought they had died. <laughs> Either went on vacation. Because I didn't hear the noise for about three weeks. And then one day, out the blue, I just heard some stomping. I was like, oh my God, I just realized that I hadn't heard the stomping. <sighs> Hmm. 
you know what's funny? And it, but it's not funny, but it's funny at the same time. I want to play the video, but I'm nervous because it's playing music in the background. And I don't want to get my video demonetized. But I'll, we just gonna talk. I'm gonna put the link so y'all can so y'all can watch it. Stacy Dash shares an emotional video after recently finding out that DMX passed away over a year ago. So she says, "I was strolling through TikTok and found a hashtag DMX song that has saved me many times. Suddenly, it says hashtag R.I.P." I know I am late. I did not know he passed away. He hashtag OD'd. Excuse me. I'm heartbroken. He was such a great guy. Hashtag devastated. Hashtag Stacy Stacy Dash. Hashtag FYP. Hashtag sober. This is the thing. People got stuff going on. You busy, even if you ain't busy, you can't keep up with everybody who die. People die every every day. Somebody just died right now. You know what I'm saying? So, and somebody just died right now. And somebody just died right now. So it's like people die every second. And you know, it's it, you, you can't keep up with people. You just can't keep up with people's death. That's as harsh as, as it may sound. However, and I get that we, you know, I I don't know every celebrity that has passed away. Um, God, I don't really try to keep up with, you know, what celebrity passed away. As mean as it, that may sound, but it's just the truth. <sighs> I'm not saying that DMX was this girl. When he passed away, he was this international superstar. And, you know, he was, he at the time of his death, you know, I'm not saying that he was this international superstar who, you know, was the Michael Jackson of the hip hop world. You know what I'm trying to say? But Stacey, <laughs> Stacey says she's sober. When she said, has she, Stacey, is she on that shit again? Because, <laughs> Stacey, why is your black ass down to the TikTok crying, making videos of finding that you just found a DMX pass? DMX been dead, girl. Stacey said she didn't know. Stacey said, I've been going through my own shit, basically. I didn't know the nigga was dead. I didn't know the nigga had died. She said, she said hashtag sober, so I guess that's I guess that's her way of letting us know that she's sober. We know we know we know Stacey has, um, from what I can from what I recall, she's had her own dealings with drugs. I don't know what drugs, but she's had her own dealings with, you know, drugs and all that, you know, bad stuff. Um, but Stacey, I just don't, I hope you're not on that shit no more, cuz. Girl, I need you to get your ass down from the TikTok, <laughs> girl. Stacey said she just found out DMX is dead. <laughs> How you just find out DMX is dead? I'ma leave Stacey alone. Stacey already going through a lot. I'ma leave Stacey alone. <sighs> girl, so Tyrese. <laughs> Tyrese down to the courthouse cutting up. A judge snapped at Tyrese. You know what I think sometimes what happens to some of us, and I think I'm, I know I'm guilty. I know I'm guilty of this. Um, I guess we all have our, you know, ways, or you know, we all instantly jump on, jump onto something, and we may not know all the details, or we may not even really try to pay attention to what's going on. You know, like as soon as I see something about like. A woman and a man, I'm gonna take the woman's side. You know what I'm saying? And I think that for some people, when they see something, you know, like a black man and a white man, you know, sometimes, you know, you may automatically take like the black man's side, right? But I have to just be honest about this clip, right? When Tyrese was in um, down to the child support court, whatever it's called. The judge snapped at Tyrese, and he got upset. I saw a lot of people in the comment section basically saying, you know, that's just a white man snapping at a black man. You know, why? basically they didn't really understand why the judge was upset. But if you listen to the recording, to me it made sense of why the judge snapped at Tyrese 
I can't play the audio because the audio is a mess and I'm scared to play the video. So again, I'm going to have to just put the link to the video so you can listen to it. Um, because again, if I tried to play the audio, you probably couldn't hear it. And I, I'm scared to play the video. <laughs> um, so I'm going to put the link to the, um, to the article so you could watch it and listen to it to yourself. But once you listen to it, to me, this is what I heard. I heard the judge getting upset because he says, I recalled, like in your last testimony, basically you told me that you were in this type of situation financially. Now we got your W-2 from that year and it says you made over $2 million. So how the hell, basically, you pretty much were broke are you saying you ain't had no money or you was in this situation, but you made over $2 million? Now, 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 now. Some people could argue that just because he made over $2 million does not mean that he wasn't broke, right? And does not mean that, girl, he wasn't struggling financially, which is very well the truth. And maybe the judge should have taken that into account. Well, maybe he still could be struggling. Even though he made over $2 million that year, he still could have been struggling. But I think that's part of the reason why the judge probably got pissed because all he saw was you made over $2 million. It's almost like saying, it's almost like y'all can understand how somebody could make $2 million and still be broke, but you don't understand how a child could possibly need $20,000 a month for a lifestyle. What's really the difference? What's the difference of you trying to defend the fact that he still could be broke and bring over $2 million a month, but this child who also has the same lifestyle, probably not the same exact lifestyle, right? But, you know, they have that lifestyle that $20,000 or $30,000 could not would be too much for a child. You see what I'm trying to say? That I think I think that I think that sometimes some of the people in the comment section, you prove my point of saying you don't know somebody's lifestyle. It sounded like Tyrese was getting slick by the mouth with, the, with, with I think, the lawyer. Because if you heard him say something about, I'm talking to Smarty. It sounded like he was about to say Smarty Pants or I don't know if he was going to curse or not. Girl, all I'm saying is this, girl. We, if you are a person of a particular age, girl, you know that when you go to court, you got to act a certain way. Regardless if you want to or not, you got to. I had court over a Zoom call some months, some months back. like Probably like last year. I had court over a Zoom call. Girl, I'm in my living room. Girl, I still went to my bedroom and ironed a shirt and had it buttoned up and made sure it had a collar on it. And I'm sitting in my living room on a Zoom call. So that's old school. <laughs> okay. See, old, the old school people, we know that when you go to court, regardless if you agree with the court or whatever, girl, you know you better go in there and you better look like you got some sense. You better say, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. And go on by your business. It sounds like Tyrese was trying to get smart. <laughs> and I think that's part of the reason why the judge snapped too. Tyrese don't have to pay $20,000 in child support. However, he has to pay ten. dollars I think that's another reason why the judge got uh, upset too because it's like, girl, he also made a comment like, girl, this is your child. This is your child, basically. This is your child. You out here being broke off $2 million, but you don't want your child to have, that, have part of that same lifestyle. I don't care how y'all try to slice it and dice it. It's trifling. Especially when you take into account that once upon a time, I don't know if it's still to this day, Tyrese was on TV talking about he had a Benihana's and a Starbucks in his house. But y'all want to sit here and talk about $20,000 too much. No, it ain't. It ain't too much when you're used to that type of lifestyle. When, you don't, when, you, when you're growing up in that type of lifestyle, that's not a lot. Could I live off $20,000 a month? Girl, hell yeah. Girl, I done lived, girl, I done lived off girl, $5.15 an hour before. So, girl, I can make it do what it do. You know what I'm saying? It's not about, girl, can you make it, can you make it off of. It's about, girl, what you're used to. Girl, I'm not used to no $20,000. <laughs> Hopefully it come one day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 
I'm just saying, y'all. So he got to pay ten thousand dollars a month in child support. Ten thousand, I think it's like ten thousand six hundred twenty dollars, something like that, a month in child support. Um, you know, it is what it is. It's not the twenty thousand. The ten thousand dollars is gonna have to do, right? I mean, they live in, uh, and again, of course, the the child support, you know, laws. It, co- it goes according to your income. It goes according to the state that you live in. It goes according to your lifestyle. That's another thing that y'all be forgetting about. You can't, you can't, your ch- even if you, eat, girl, let's say the mom and the daddy get, we're not going through this anymore. We're going to, I'm going to say this and we're going to be done. Say the mom and daddy get a divorce. Y'all, of course, start screaming, bitch, you better get a job. You better get a job. You better get a job. You better, you know, y'all hate for, you know, it's, it's so crazy because girl, Y'all, you know, say there's nothing wrong with, you know, like a woman being an at-home mom, a stay-at-home mom, but as soon as a divorce happens, y'all start hollering, you better get a job, bitch. You're trying to take that man money and all that stuff, right? Um, even, you know, you, you're used to a certain lifestyle. It would make no sense for Tyrese's daughter, even though she's only three years old, to be used to this certain lifestyle. And just because mommy and daddy get a divorce, now mommy has to go over here and girl be my next door neighbor. <laughs> I'll be my I'll be my upstairs neighbor. But then when you go over to daddy house, who probably got a 10,000 square foot house, and more than likely you're probably with mommy most of the time. Let's just call a thing a thing. Especially with your father being a movie star. He's probably traveling around from city to city, state to state, girl, country to country, continent to continent. Girl, you just don't know. So yes, while the while the while the mother may not have the same lifestyle as the daddy with the Benny Hanna's girl, it has to be similar lifestyles. Your daddy not gonna be living over here in Buckhead and then girl, <laughs> girl. Your mama living somewhere deep in the hood. That's not that it don't work that way. So, anyways, girl, it is what it is, girl. Let's move on. Ugh. Chloe Kardashian opens up about parenting her baby boy after splitting from ex Tristan Thompson. It's super scary, but I take my job very seriously. <laughs> girl, you've been a single mama this whole time. Now all of a sudden, girl, it's super scary. <sighs> Earlier this month, um, the 38-year-old entrepreneur and her NBA ex Tristan Thompson circulated headlines revealing the birth of her of their unnamed son via surrogate. The two reportedly made the decision to expand their family prior to Thompson 31 cheating on and off again. Wait, um, wait, wait, cheating on his own and off again partner for the umpteenth time. The fa- uh, and fathering another child with Instagram model Marley Nichols. What's a, what's a, <laughs> is it a such thing as an Instagram model? I guess it is, girl. Um, Chloe uh, Kardashian stated being able to shape this little people to shape little people into re- into really incredible big people is an honor and a gift. I know it's a cliche, but I love everything, even the hard parts of parenting. She said it's super scary, but I take my job very seriously. Girl, no, you don't. Girl, no, you don't. Because I'm, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say something. Else. I'm going to go ahead and shake the table. You can't take your job very seriously as a parent if, girl, you choose to keep having babies by a fuck nigga. Because you want to sit here and act like, girl, being able to shape these little people into incredible big people is an honor and a gift. Well, girl, the father that you choose, how was he going to help shape these little people into these incredible big people? Oh, you want your babies to have the same baby daddy. And because Tristan was such an outstanding father, you decided to have him be a part of another journey for a boy now. Because Tristan is just that great of a man that you will want your son to grow up to be just like his father. <laughs> Y'all a mess. <sighs> she got the same baby daddy. So, I mean, girl, it is what it is. All right, y'all, that's it. Yeah, that's it, girl. We didn't talk too long. We'll probably talk about, tomorrow we'll probably talk about The Breakfast Club. And um, 
Kevin Federline with his old trifling, dingy, dusty girl. Look like he living in a trailer park, white trash ass, over there spending up all Britney's money. Now that girl, that money train about to come to an end, now his old dusty ass out here trying to do interviews. I do not like Kevin Federline. I don't. I don't like the way he doing Britney. Yes, Britney get a pass. She do. Yes, Britney get, now, now I'm sitting around in my mouth. Yes, Britney get a pass. Britney get a pass because we know that Britney. Okay, you know how Kanye has mental health issues and Kanye is a hot ass mess? I feel like Britney is worse. <laughs> I do. I also think Kanye got mental health issues, but I also think Kanye know what the fuck he be doing too. <laughs> I think Britney is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think Britney, you know. So I think the. I, I... <laughs> We're gonna cut Britney some slack. And I don't think it the, I don't think it helps Britney any when girl, yo, when you have your ex husband, the father of your two kids, who you've been given how how much in child support? I think it was twenty thousand dollars a month in child support, thirty something like that, girl. And all he did was sit around and get fat. So you know, girl, you <laughs> you know he was eating good off that thirty twenty thousand dollars that britney was giving that motherfucker yes i have a double standard for men taking women money and that that's nothing new so anybody who got something to say yes i don't like for men to take women money i think that is sorry as fuck that's one of the reasons why i think i love peter because when it came down to it peter didn't try to take cynthia's money yes i know somebody gonna bring up that business deal that was a business deal what i'm saying is he didn't try to get alimony spouse or support or nothing like that Y'all want to be men and bitches at the same time. Then y'all turn around and call these women, girl, you too masculine. Well, nigga, you too feminine. <laughs> Make up your mind. Do you want to be the bitch or the nigga? Okay? Will you watch Britney Spears' ex-husband Kevin Federline gives tell-all interview? Says their sons haven't seen her in months. Kevin Federline continues to hog the limelight after recently sitting down for an interview with 60 Minutes Australia to discuss his ex-wife Britney Spears, their former relationship, excuse me, and why their two sons, Sean Preston and Jaden, have seemingly distanced themselves from her. I, I, I'm going to say this much. I, I, I can see how it could be difficult on the sons to see your parent, your mother, you know, Britney be doing a lot on the internet. I'm sorry, y'all. And not a lot, but it's embarrassing. And if it's emba if I catch secondhand embarrassment, I know that her children who are teenagers, they definitely catch secondhand embarrassment. Um, but I also think with that being said, I still think that Kevin is over there, girl, playing mind tricks with those kids, too. I think that girl, while they might be embarrassed, I think that once he sees that they're embarrassed, girl, he kind of like latches on to it and makes the situation worse than what it needs to be. That's what I think is happening. Um, I still feel bad for her. The former backup dancer who retains sole custody of their children earns a reported 20K in child support. The boys, um, I had to worry about them. I couldn't get involved. It's been a few months since they've actually seen her. Um, earlier this month, the pop star's lawyer called out Federline for posting secret recordings, seemingly taken from the boys while Spears was scolding them for their bad behavior. But in the way that the clips were posted along with a defensive caption written by the dad of six, it was heavily insinuated that Spears was an unfit mother because she was quarreling with her sons. <clears throat> Brittany just wanted one of them little boys to put some lotion on his ashy ass hands. So. <laughs> and I think one of the asses was walking outside in the snow barefoot and I can't remember. That's why she was cussing the ass out. We, we not going to go too hard on, on Brittany. Brittany is an icon, okay? Shout out to Brittany. Fuck Kevin. All right, I'll talk to y'all girls and boys later. Bye, y'all.